All eyes on Adalia as I look out at our SkyCam network. This is Tampa looking toward Tampa Bay. This area is about to look a lot different as we go into the overnight hours as the wind and rain from Adalia get closer. And as I turn on the satellite, another one of my tools, this is technology that wasn't even this great two or three years ago. This can save lives, folks. And right here is showing that eye wall getting brutal right now. Very intense thunderstorms on that front right quadrant that are well over 100 mile per hour when you factor in the gust. Let me turn on the visible satellite because here we are. Look at that eye wall punching through very uh, bright and you can see it just developing all around right there. Let me pause it just to get in on this. These thunderstorms are shooting higher to that watching it closely here due to all of this. This eye wall is where you're going to find the most significant weather. Hurricane Idalia five o'clock advisory has winds at 100 miles per hour moving toward the north. We've got a category two here and those gusts are even higher than that 100 mile per hour sustained winds. Imagine that consistent winds at 100 miles per hour. That's unfortunately what's coming toward the Big Bend region of Florida as it's expected to intensify to a cat three with winds around 115 miles per hour throughout the day. Tomorrow it's going to move toward the north into Georgia, then South Carolina, where we'll get some impacts in the Carolinas beginning by midday with some wind and rain. The coastline in the Carolinas is where we'll find the worst of the weather. Then it kind of meanders out to sea and fizzles out as it does over the next uh, couple of days. Watching the recon data closely from the hurricane hunters, what they're finding is that center of circulation is closing off. The storm surge expected to be just really significant here. 8 to 12 feet really from Tampa north. This area is going to have that rush of water come inland. Not only that, but as this storm is rolling along the Carolina coast from Savannah to to Charleston to Myrtle Beach. This coincides with high tide and an extra high tide because of the lunar cycle right now. Uh, really, really bad timing there as this is going to roll through with as much as five foot storm surge there and with some areas being very near sea level. That's a problem. Spaghetti models in great agreement with it going on along the I 95 corridor and then kind of meandering around. Notice how some of these wrap it back around. That's been popular on uh, the web today. Uh, what's happening here is this actually is just the steering curves kind of break down and whatever this is kind of meanders around and dies out right here could have a plume of moisture come circle back around, but it won't be the tropical entity that it is right now or in the next couple of days. Here's the high resolution model that uh, we have access to here at WIFF 4 Cedar Key North. This is where the system's going to make landfall as it continues to move inland. It's going to pack a punch, folks. Georgia, Hilton Head to Charleston. We'll get in on some heavy rain across the western Carolinas, 2, 3, 4 o'clock. This continues through about 8. Then we're breaking things down across the western Carolinas while that that onshore flow is bringing that Atlantic water in at high tides where it's going to especially be bad there for Charleston and Myrtle Beach. We'll watch that very, very closely. Let's look at the wind speeds with this system as it's continuing to move toward the north here. This thing's going to pack a punch. We'll get a brand new one of these models here in the next half hour. It's showing 100 mile per hour plus winds as this rolls through Florida and then crosses into Georgia with very stout winds. As far as rain is concerned, from Hilton Head Island to Charleston to Myrtle Beach, a good solid two to five inches being a, a main bet, but you see some areas get closer to nine or 10 inches. Those isolated areas could get some significant flooding there. Let me break it down for you town by town across the western Carolinas. We've got dry conditions to start Wednesday, but then comes those outer bands two, three, four o'clock. Some of those heavier rain bands will start to set up across the area. It will be wet going into the afternoon hours and then clearing up by midnight and beyond and Thursday and beyond. It's looking great for Labor Day weekend. Same story with the winds. It'll be breezy in the morning, 10 to 15 miles per hour. But then as the day goes on, those gusts get up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. Let me show you the forecast. So tomorrow morning, you'll wake up to the lower 70s. As we go throughout the day, well below where we should be in the upper 70s for highs because of the wind and rain coming in from Medallia. Let me show you the four day plus because we're tracking the tropics tomorrow with windy and rainy conditions and then clearing on Thursday. Very nice with highs only in the mid to upper 70s. A fantastic Labor Day weekend ahead with highs in the low to mid 80s by Labor Day itself. We're back to near 90 degrees. Of course, in western North Carolina, a little bit cooler. Great weather for the North Carolina.